Well, hello there, my fellow miners and crafters. Good times with Scar here, and we're taking a hot, warm bath of death. I've come to peace with my inevitable death here as I was falling from the nether ceiling. There was a hole in the walkway, resulting in all of my stuff despawning. Oh, man. The Grim Reaper had the high ground in that scenario. You know I died and lost all of that? for soul sand. That is right, an entire set of diamond tools and armor lost because of a broken railing that I clipped and fell into. That is so embarrassing. Fell right to my furry demise. Wait, not furry demise, fiery demise. Thankfully, Tango and XB, just wonderful hermits, came over and gave me some extra tools and armor, so I'm very appreciative of it. Also, why is Pooter inside this hole? Why are you rowing now? That is far more interesting than falling in the hole. How are you doing that? Look at him, he's just rowing. <laughs> oh my gosh, that is amazing. Oh, dude, I was hoping he would actually row but it's just some kind of like phantom animation. That is amazing. That makes me feel so much better. But anyway, guys, we've got some work to do and that is defeating a wither. And don't you worry one minute. Look at the size of my brain. It's so big, you literally can't see it inside my head. It's quite a feat. And I have set up a area down below. Ah, you know, I was trying to be tricky by falling all the way down and are you kidding me? I grabbed on. I had a tight grasp on that ladder. Oh boy, this fight is already starting out with a bang. <laughs> this is what I was trying to do was lift off and catch myself and lift off and catch myself and lift off and catch myself so we could get down a little faster. But apparently that was just too much for me. I am ready to fight. We've got a whole set of armor, some different things that will help us out. We will release the wither in this area here here if this goes bad we're going to release an enormous can of cheese aka iron golems and this thing will never know what hit it but we're gonna try legit to kill this to start with okay <laughs> let it charge up and then we're gonna nail it right when it hits it now thank you to all the hermitcraft historians out there by the way i just want to let you know that thank you for telling me that i have survived a wither fight before i uh, greatly appreciate that well this is going really really well Look at us go, guys! Look at us, we're powerful! Okay, we're not powerful. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die, this is bad. Oh, I might have to unleash that can of cheese! Okay, it's fine, it's fine, everything's good, everything's good. Deep breaths, keep our hand on the cheese container, and here we go! Did Scar maneuver, the dodge and weave, dodge and weave. Oh gosh, we've got this, we've got this! <laughs> you are mine, buddy! Yes, come on! Did he die? Did he die? Where is he? Where is he? Did he disappear? Oh no, oh no. Did he teleport? Can they teleport? Oh no, what in the world? Wait, I'm so confused. What just happened? I'm so scared. I don't want to release a wither on the world. That would be a bad thing. Oh man, I'm a little bit terrified to be honest with you. I don't know where he went. Did he glitch through the wall? Oh no, I'm scared. Oh, okay, that was really dumb, Scar. All I need is my stuff back and to know if he glitched through the wall. Okay, 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 here's my stuff. Everything's here. I don't hear him. Where is he? Oh, we killed him. His uh remains are in our inventory now. Wow, okay. I thought they made like a sound and there was like a flash of light. Or am I thinking of the dragon? I am very confused now. I feel like to make this a really great fight, we need like John Williams to come through the wall here with a trumpet and a trombone and a whole uh, orchestra of cheering. That is what I should have got for surviving this weather fight. Hold on. Did I actually survive that? Let me know in the comments. Did I survive it? Because technically I killed it according to the nether star of my inventory, but then I also died by a withering effect. Well, I apparently just died and res resurrected. Died and resurrected. Well, hello there. Anyway, let me know. Did I survive the wither fight or did I not? Reason being, I did die afterwards by the withering effect, but I did kill it before I died. I don't know. In the comments, yes, Scar, you won. No, Scar, you did it. Let me know. We've got our beacon now. And with that beacon, we're going to grind, grind, grind some resources to make some beautiful builds. 
in the future. Now you might be wondering where I got all the books to enchant the gear that I got from Tango and XP. Now I'll be showing you that in a moment and it's gonna knock your socks off. But anyway, up here in the tree, we have not interiorified this tree yet because I wasn't sure what to do with it. And I wasn't just gonna make some kind of standard interior with some box rooms. No, I wanted this to be flowing and organic. And I think I have finally figured out how to do it. So the inspiration, has finally struck. Now, our cookie empire that we've been talking about for quite some time, these guys will actually be relocated because, well, a cookie empire cannot be contained in this tree. It's gonna need its own tree. On second thought, we might need more than one tree for the cookie empire, but it'll be so nice to have an interior because our interior is like a literal garbage dump for an interior. Remember how I said that I had a surprise for you about where I got all those magical books? Well, I've got them here at our villager trading hall we've been working on off camera. This is with Tango and Green, and we've undertaken the greatest of all Minecraft grinds is to create a villager trading hall. Villagers are impossible, like this fellow who refuses to become a cartographer at all costs. He refuses. He wants to be an artist, not a cartographer. And then this one, look at this one. This one refuses to give us discounts by becoming a zombie. He is extremely tough. Also, surprise, surprise, I fell in lava this time, but luckily I had some golden apples in my inventory. Probably shouldn't try to take the emeralds from the road, especially when the block is below you. But this is the greatest grind, as I said, and Green and Tango have done a vast majority of work. I have some plans on how to make it more aesthetically pleasing, which I think is going to be really, really fun. We've also learned that Green can cure the villagers and get discounts. I can cure the same villagers and get discounts, and we can all benefit from that, which is amazing. I'll share more about my build ideas a little later in the episode. By the way, can I just take a moment here and thank you so much for all the positivity and nice comments about the portal we built in our last episode. I had a blast with our little improv portal and to see everybody like it and create in their own worlds or create fan art around it just really warmed my heart after a bit of a rough week. My feeding tube is kind of kicking my butt. There's some complications with it. You know, Dr. Fix is one thing, creates two more problems downstream. You know how it goes, but yeah, that just wore my heart seeing that. And I want to also remind you guys that I'm going to be in MCC this weekend, 8 p.m. GMT, I think, on my Twitch channel. Make sure you're following me on Twitter, Twitch, to be notified when I go live. But huge honor and a huge thank you to the Knox crew, C Major, Scott, that is, for inviting me to the event. And uh, yeah, I think it's going to be a ton of fun and can't wait to see you there. Enough gibbering, enough jabbering. Time to turn this tree into our home. I know I should be working on the interior, but this wall is a perfect opportunity to write something inside the copper. And with a little bit of wax on and wax off, we've got ourselves a little message sub to Scar as a giant billboard in front of Green's face. <laughs> Let's continue to change out different sayings on here, but uh, that is hilarious, but I probably should get back to work. Enough horsing around, it's time to reveal the interior of our elven tree. So where we're at now is I have established a layout, walls, and a floor. We'll now move on to adding all the decorational details, the energy, things like that. But for the floor here, you can see that I have a mix of birch, strip logs, and planks with intertwined organics, which also allowed me to place lighting into the floor to keep that birch wood very bright and light because this is a fairly dark interior, so that just makes it a little bit more um, a little more bright and energy filled interior. So look at this root structure that takes us down into the basement where we might build farms or sell it to some hermits. Surprisingly, some hermits might want to buy it. <laughs> so yeah, that might be something we'll do in the future. And we have another basement entrance here, which is more of like a Batman entrance. And yeah, I absolutely had a blast working on this. It took way into the night to get this all laid out, but I think we established that organic flow that we were trying to achieve and to avoid a very boxy interior. Speaking of boxy interiors, this is the only real box of an interior that we have, and we might turn this into our storage and crafting room. Over here, I've got no idea what I'm going to do, but I think I'll split these into two rooms. 
And uh, yeah, this was a lot of fun actually to put all together. And I think it came out really, really nice. And it is very much not a garbage dump anymore. Surprisingly, I found this whole section of room over here into one of our other elven towers. I broke a block and it just opened up into a surprise room. So that's fun. And as we work up to the top here, I might put our uh, bedroom here in this loft. So I thought this could be a really good spot for a bed. So I kind of shaped it in that way. And also we have a ladder leading to the upper floors of the tree. And I don't actually know what to do with this. So if you have any ideas, feel free to let me know what to do with this floor because I do not know yet. All the windows are accessible. So that is nice because originally they were kind of getting blocked. So I really formatted this whole structure. So all the windows at least can have the ability to be looked out of and not look super awkward. There's another window over there. Now, this next floor here might be the vibe floor where we put a music disc jukebox and some chairs and some cake. And it's just kind of a nice little uh, chill space up at the very top there. But uh, as I said, let me know what you want to see me do with that section there. And of course, we'll do a bedroom here and in our little out cove i got no idea we'll come up with that eventually but to make our interior complete we need to do a little bit of a shopping spree and get ourselves some resources first shop here is beef's wool shop which is one diamond per stack and we need one stack cub fan has a coffee shop here which he has themed to his potion shop and we need some of this fire resistance and it is one diamond for five. Wow, that is a value. One, two, three, four, five. Wait, what? How do I pay? How do I pay? It just filled back up. Come, where do I put my money? <laughs> oh, over here. <laughs> that was very confusing. Oh, invisibility. Definitely gonna take some of those. And the payment. Jev, I've gotta say, this base is absolutely beautiful. All right, so we need slime. It is very hard to get slime. So two stacks for a diamond. So I'm gonna probably grab four. No, I'm gonna keep going. I'm actually gonna keep going. I'm gonna keep going even further. Beautiful. Also, I'd really need some honey blocks. Look, mom, I'm driving a tractor. Oh, enough horsing around. We need some crimson logs and this is, ooh, okay, okay. Those are expensive, but that's okay. That's okay. We do need some of these for our build. And I do believe we need some of the red ones too. Oh, free pies. Well, 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 I'll definitely take some of those. Don't you forget, subscore. <laughs> <laughs> we made it back over to our area and the entity, which I want to get some of this rare copper. So exposed copper and weathered copper is rarely sold. So I am all for this. So I think I'm going to get two stacks of each. You know what? I'm going to go crazy. I'm going to get another stack because you never know when you're going to need that for like a small little detail. So super, super useful. The only thing that we didn't get besides boom, subscar is honey blocks. That's what I really needed. Hmm. Nothing like finding another use for the super hoe because we can take our rooted dirt here like a so hop up here and harvest ourselves some roots, which I think could be really cool in the interior of the tree. Sweet baby jelly. Our uh, sign here has already been defaced. Hmm, we need to think of something else to put here now. But until then, it is time to head back to our survival base and finally complete it once and for all. And to do that, we need to put the heart and soul into the structure here. So by doing that, we're going to add the human element, the element that makes us feel lived in. Now, to make this all a reality, these ears aren't just to look aesthetically pleasing. No, we're gonna harness the power of the pointy ear and spin our storage and crafting room into existence, both visually appealing and functional. But look at this thing. I am so excited to have this. Look at our chandelier hanging with the little particles. And can I mention, can we back up a moment here? Look at that chain up there. Really, really cool. But as I said, both visually appealing and also functionable. We've got all of our chests. We have our workstations built into the walls here. And it, as I said, was kind of a challenge to make something that's both visually appealing and also functionally useful, that is. And it has its kind of elegant elven architecture, its organic feel to it. And also a great place to put all of our junk. I can't wait to come in here and disorganize it all up with all of our junk from outside, which is cluttering the walkways. But anyway, this room has been a challenge in itself. So 
let's also spin it into our pantry and our smelting room. So it's kind of like a dry goods pantry. I mean, these ears are super useful. So we got our smelter here. I mean, it's no super smelter, but it's totally gonna work. It's got some automatic functionality to it, which will be really nice. And uh, that right there, Yep, that's a B butt. I know you're here for the butts, and there you go. But uh, yeah, I think this uh, came out really nice. It's got a really cool view. It's got the mushrooms there. We can see Grand's water wheel, pearls. <laughs> pearls B alien plants, which are fantastic. And uh, yeah, I, I, I like it. I'm glad we came up with something to put in that room. I wasn't sure what to do with it at first, but another place that has really stumped me on what to do with it is of course this area in the root structure that leads into one of the elven towers. And it's very tight and dark and I'm not 100% sure what to do with it. So let's put it on the back burner and spin this loft into our bedroom. That's right. Our ears have created ourselves the most elegant and beautiful bedroom that Seriously, that bed is putting me to sleep. I've had some sleepless nights putting this video together, and that bed is calling to me. We got the candles for ambiance above it, and uh, yeah, I think it came out nice. Lots of fun little details, lots of plants hanging from the ceiling here. We had the little particles from the big flowers. We had the roots kind of hanging from the bark and the bees. The bees are basically taking over at this rate. <laughs> I think we got six bees in here now. I, I didn't anticipate any bees. So that is a lot of bees, but uh, this area, I think I have finally figured out what to do with it. So once we spin it, into our magical alcove. So magic always feels like it's kind of like put into the darker areas of a build, kind of in the background, a little sneaky, a little secret. And I think this area fits in really, really well. Got our potion brewers, we got our enchanter, we got places to put our potion bottles, we got the cool little details like the magical candles, crystal, things along those lines. So yeah, look at it down there. I think that came out pretty darn cool. So to put a bow on this entire build, let's <laughs> let's spin ourselves a grandfather clock and one of our best grandfather clocks that we have made by far. Every time I try to make them a little bit better, right? I try to elevate the design or elevate it. No, I mean elevation. No, I'm, I can't think of the right word. Not elevation. I'm trying to not elevate. I'm trying to evolve. There we are, evolve. So I'm trying to evolve the design with the doors and I think it came out rather cool. So. Yeah, this has been a really fun build to put together. I love how it has a little bit of kind of architectural elements and also a whole lot of organics and kind of mixing those things has been an absolute blast. So down the root system, added some more texture and variety to the organics down there. There's our grandfather clock again. As you can tell, I'm kind of in love. Um, but uh, yeah, storage and crafting room here. And uh, once again, I think this came out really nice. And I really do hope that these builds give you inspiration 500 chests 500 hoppers good times oh i oh man he is grinding at the villager trading hall making all the redstone work give tango and give green some love will you they're putting a ton of work there but yeah look at our interior here a little alcove of magic and if we go up these stairs you got to be really careful not to fall asleep with me because that bed that bed is alluring it's calling to me i'm, I'm drifting i'm holding on i'm drifting <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Anyway, guys, that bed, I got to get away from it. Now, up on this upper floor here, I need your help. This area, I'm not sure what to do with. These ears may have built the rest of this base, but it has failed me when it comes to this floor. So help me in the comments, come up with what I should build in this loft space. Now, on the loft space above it, I've turned that into our vibe room to listen to music. We got a couch, we have a record player. I've dimmed the window a little bit. We've got cake. So yeah, I think that came out really nice. This spot, not so nice because, well, I don't actually know what to do with it. Stay away from that bed, I'm gonna fall asleep. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I have had a blast with this base. And a big thanks to those ears for helping us spin it into reality. Now that we've completed the interior, it's time to sign up for Grian's newest game here, which is exciting. This is the first uh, Grian game of season. Wow, I forgot what the season is. Is it season 10 or 8? It Well, obviously, maybe it's 9, the one I didn't say. Anyway, <laughs> I completely forgot. I've been, I've been on Hermitcraft a long time. All right, sign up is open. Chest is in the back. All right, we'll visit the back in a moment. This is the proper sign up here. So, Secret Fools sign up. All right. 
This works just like Secret Santa. You sign up by placing a piece of paper in the chest in the hat with your username on it and enter the wait. Oh, and after the 26th, the button will become available to push. Ooh. And you will find out who is your secret fool. The goal is to prank your secret fool without them knowing who. If you sign up, you accept any prank. Ooh. Wow. Oh, that's quite a commitment. <laughs> that is quite a commitment to uh, accept any. Hmm. But anyway, I am totally down for this. I'm excited for a new green game. And let's put our name in the secret fool chest. What is this? Place your paper with your username in the chest. So there we go. All right. <laughs> I don't know what I just signed up for. That could have been a mistake or a very pleasant experience. I... I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm actually kind of nervous now, but also very excited. I just love the emerald brick road here. You take an emerald brick, right, and replace it with another block. And in the night, the emerald fairy comes and replaces the emeralds back for you to take in the morning. It is just the most wonderful system. We have finally got our villagers set up and ready to go. Now, it's not completely done. There's still a lot more redstone to be built from Tango's end. He's doing a lot of incredible stuff. Green's working on some really fun stuff on the other side of the villagers, but they're all in their cells here. It was tough getting them all in their spots, getting them all up to their master level trades, but it was sure a lot easier in season seven when everything was vertical. I'll tell you that right now, but I have an idea to make this all very aesthetically pleasing. I have a really fun idea that we may work on in our next episode. But until then, this has been Good Times with Scar and I always really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch the videos. And if you believe the video is third rating, that would be much appreciated. And until next time, we'll see you later. And don't subscribe because you may just become scarred for life.